then you lend help. So that's how you create those double teams. All right. And I, and I got it drawn up on the board behind me. And we'll get into that because I'm going to run through this stuff. All right. No one in your backside got lend help. And then uh, the rules for O linemen are stay on the down man unless dot, 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 the linebacker plugs. So if the linebacker wants to do what every linebacker in the world does, which is hop in place and take read steps, you want to take the double team and put them in the lap of the linebacker. Vertical double team, vertical double team. We don't want guys going left and right. Defenses are designed to run left and right nowadays. And uh, that's why we went to the offense where we're going to go downhill north and south, never turn our shoulders. So um, pre-snap look, if the linebacker walks up on the line of scrimmage, because guys will tell you with that, with the crazy splits that we use, um, to the field side, if you're playing a four down front, they're going to put the three shade to the, to the field. And, and that's kind of universal. If they don't, you got a one five to the field, you run triple and you're, and they're dead. You're out the gate with a dive. Anyway, a lot of guys will say to me, oh, well, coach, I'll just walk my linebacker up in, in, in the A-gap. And, and that's a great look for us because the guard will just block down because it's his weak side gap if we're running triple right. And the right tackle will block down on the three shade and we'll pull it, read it, and pitch it. Um, so that's kind of quickly how that goes. All right, front side tackle, if you're uncovered, we never block the five shade. All right, and if he decides he wants to spark inside and he's on my track to the linebacker or on my track to the double, then I'll block him. We'll, I'll draw that stuff up on the, on the whiteboard. Verse an odd front, the tackle widens. Verse an even front, the guard widens. All right, the center, he's got to figure out if he's covered or uncovered in a four down front. He's working his weak side gap. If we're running triple right, he's blocking his left gap and he's doubling with the guard to the backside linebacker. All right, backside tackle, you're going to step, protect your inside gap, gap seal funnel or backside hinge. The big thing there is keep the five technique on the backside, a five technique. A lot of times tackles, you know, they're bigger, uh, they get tired, you know, they'll hinge and kind of get compressed down into the gap. We want to keep the backside gap wide so uh, – our tailback's got an open read in the middle of the field, and we'll talk about that here in a second. So the X or Y, whoever is to the play side, all right, option to you, first a cover three shell because everybody plays eight-man front against triple. If they play too high, they're dead. Um, when in doubt, block it like it's, like it's one high. Um, they're going to push crack to the, to the near safety or to the play side safety if it's too high. Um, the play side slot, we call them the L and the R, left and right, shockingly. Um, the, it, it, versus an eight-man front, they arc release, block play side linebacker to the safety versus an eight-man front or a one-high look. If it's a two-high look, they arc release and block the play side safety. Again, if they're kind of uh, – you know, if they're kind of tilting the coverage and they're going to roll down a safety from, from depth, first of all, they always cheat and they show it. Two guys are not lined up at 10 yards. One of them's at 10, the other one's at eight, and you can see that it's coming. Our slots, no, block it like eight-man front, linebacker to safety. All right. Uh, the, the slot back away from the play call, he goes in motion to gain pitch relationship. How does he know when to go in motion? Here's my rule for motion. Be where you're supposed to be when the ball is snapped. Because when you have a guy who's a ham and egger, who's a tough dude, Division three, you know, sophomore in high school, who's first year of RC, he's not the, Smith, the fastest kid on your team, but he's just tough and he's a baller and he's got to be on the field for you. He may have to leave a little earlier than a kid who's, you know, wildly talented, has five scholarship offers and is, can, can fly. That kid can wait till the ball snaps. So it all depends on the athlete. Everybody good so far? Because I'm talking to a screen and it feels really weird. I'll keep going. Like, don't you good. All right, good. All right, triple option rules for the tailback. The tailback is aligned at five yards behind the center. And he's going to do, uh, if we're running triple right, his footwork, all right, feet are inside the armpits of, of his shoulder, of his, uh, of his shoulders. He's just got a decent forward lean. He's going to step one, 
to and gather and then roll over to football, all right? It's the quarterback's job, all right? We don't ever tell our quarterback, ride and decide. We tell our quarterback, always give him less. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. So the tailback's job is to roll over to football. His aiming point, I say front side A gap, it's actually the play side foot of the center because with the ability split or that funky split that we do to the three or the one shade side, the A gap's a big area. And we want to stay as far away from, from the dive key, all right, or the handoff key, whatever you want to call it, uh, as possible. So we're aiming play side foot of the center. If nothing is there, that tailback's taking the ball and going downhill 100 miles an hour. He expects to get the football. Downhill play side A-gap. If the A-gap, they spark and the guard blocks down, he'll, bounce, uh, he'll look to go B to backside A. That's why it's important that the backside B-gap does not get compressed because it's basically inside zone. You know, I can remember being at UMaine 15, 18 years ago, whatever it was, 15 years ago, and them saying – bang, bend, or bounce. And this is essentially bang, bend, or bounce, but this is triple option football. I say A gap, play side B gap, depending on what that play side guy does, because we don't have, you know, in high school and, and division three football, you don't have backs reading two guys making moves. You know what I mean? They're just freaking running the ball and thankful that they got an opportunity to play the greatest game on earth. So if the tailback doesn't get the ball because the quarterback pulls it, his rule is he is now a blocker. You never fake as a back. You never, ever fake as a back. You either are a ball carrier or a blocker in this offense. And, and as sure as I'm standing here, you don't. My pool guys are leaving. CFLs, um, you do not block. You do not play. And, and that's something I believe in. And, you know, and I know wideout coaches say, oh, I, I, I emphasize that. Hey, man, I'm an old line guy, so if you don't block, you don't play, you know. Um, so the tailback's job, if he doesn't get the ball, he's going to roll over and he's going to slide and glide and find the play side linebacker. Who else is on the play side linebacker is the play side slot if it's eight man front. If the play side slot's blocking him, he should go to the safety. So it's linebacker to safety and the same rule for the slot, linebacker to safety. So you're getting a double seal on the play side linebacker with your play side tackle and you either your slot or your tailback and you're getting somebody up on the safety. So all that stuff is, is real nice. All right. If we get um, a lot of teams love to love to line up in a four, four and then walk down the outside linebackers, jump the tackles inside gaps, jump the DNs inside and think they're going to mess with you. All right. For our quarterback and our tailback, they know, that there's no give here, all right? We're going to make the O-line's just going to say, hey, ball's going right. There's a guy in my weak side gap, block to my left. Everybody's going to block back. We're going to leave the end man, which is now the outside linebacker who's on the line of scrimmage, all right? He's not the, he's not the, the handoff key or the dive key, all right? He's the option key. The tailback and the quarterback know that because we practice this every day. Quarterback's going to open up, you know, give it, a look of an option. The tailback's going to bend around to the play side linebacker. Everybody's blocking back. We're going to go downhill at the outside linebacker. Outside linebacker feathers. We pitch the ball. Or, or he feathers. We keep the ball. He comes at us. We pitch the football. So the tailback knows automatically by a pressure look that he's not getting the ball, so he's a blocker. He's going linebacker to safety. More times than not, in that look, the play side slot, We'll get the play side linebacker, and the tailback knows he's sliding and gliding up to the safety who's running the alley for what? The pitch, because they're going to put the outside backer on the quarterback and say knock his freaking lights out and make him pitch the ball. So our quarterback knows, here it comes, pressure up, pitch the football. Tailback knows, I got to block the safety. The play side wideout knows, push, crack to the safety. All right? I mean, I'll take my, my slot back one of my most talented players versus your 10th or 11th best tackler in open space all day long, your corners. I'd much rather have that matchup than a safety. So anyway, the quarterback, three and a half yards. Uh, his job, pre-snap, three things I have my quarterback say to themselves. Once they're aligned, read, breathe, snap. 
all right? That's their pre-snap mentality. Take a look, is it a pressure look? Is it a four four? Is it a one high? Is it a two high? So they're, because, because when you're running the triple, you're practicing this, this stuff every day, all right? So the quarterback knows based on certain defenses, the kind of looks he can get, all right? So if it's four four, cover three, nothing looks squirrely, everybody's feet are good, nobody's got big eyes like they're blitzing, the quarterback's just gonna make, make his decision based off the dive key, 10 man on the line of scrimmage, all right? So catch the snap and make a play. So read, make your read, take a deep breath, set hit, and then decide what we're going to do with the football. All right. If the dive key sparks inside or lines up as a four eye, the tackle's blocking them down, quarterback gets the ball outside. Always given less. Like I said, there's no riding decide. It's always given less. And I used to give – a bunch of different kind of uh, explanations for it. But unless the defensive end, who's got to bend with those funky splits, and the reason we do those splits, I'll get to when we get, when we get on the whiteboard here, um, is to stretch, that, to stretch that read. And there's a technique that the play side tackle will deal with to slow that dude down a little bit. Anyway, if the, if the defensive end can get his ear hole across the belly of the back, across his belly button, put his ear hole on the belly button, then it's a pull. Other than that, give it. And how do I coach that? I tell these guys, catch the ball, put your eyes on the read, and unless that guy can get his ear hole on the belly button, give him the football. It's better to be wrong than wrong. Meaning, I'm not sure what that guy's doing, so I pull the ball, and he's on a mess charge. He hits me right under the chin and dislodges the ball, and we're out. Um, you know, I can think back to one time when our quarterback at Bates, who was pretty good, Trevor, um, he, he had a funky mess charge, and we were playing at Williams the first year we beat him up there. And they had that kid at defensive end. The kid was a creature, man. And he gave kind of a, a, an odd look, and Trevor, you know, was a little bit of a Tennessee gambler, and he decided he wasn't going to go with always giving less, and he tried to read it, and that dude lit his ass up, and it was minus three on that play. And we wound up um, throwing it up to the big man and scoring in that series. But he came off the field and I said, how do you feel? And he said, oh, my God, that kid's like Latimer from the movie The Program. And he hit me so hard, Coach. I'm not sure I want that to happen again. So then, then follow your rule. Always give the ball unless, all right? So pressure look, twos, four, sixes, everybody squeezed in, outside backers coming. Here's, the, here's how we fix that. If he's coming like his hair's on fire, attack a slow pitch key fast. I'm sorry, attack a fast pitch key slow. So if he's coming fast, I'm just going to shuffle my feet, sit down, and one of the keys to pitching the football is exhale. All right? As you pitch, blow, blow it out. All right? The quarterback is heart to heart. All right? You got to have the ball here, heart to heart when you pitch the football. Never down here because then it's your stuff down to the dirt. All right, your junk to the dirt is no good. Get the ball up at your chest, heart to heart, pitch the football. Exhale, gets the air out of the diaphragm, guy, boom, smacks you. You got no air in your lungs to get the air knocked out of you or the wind knocked out of you. See so you pop up, you say, great hit, man. And now that dude goes back to the hall and says, wait a second, I just hit their quarterback right in the teeth. And that dude got up and ran off, like ran back to the hall. All right, so. A slow pitch key, we want to run at him and force him to make a decision. Is he playing me or is he playing the, playing the pitch? All right. And then the pitch, we always want to attack the inside or upfield shoulder of the guy, all right, of the, of the, of the uh, pitch key. Any questions so far, guys? Oh, man. What's going on with my pictures? I got it. Let me just exit real quick, fellas. Yeah, all my slides are blank now, the, the photos. Anyway, it don't matter, all right? I'd much rather go to the whiteboard anyway. I'll go to general rules here in a second, all right? And then we'll, because we'll, uh, I, I, I can draw the stuff up on the board. I'd rather just deal with doing that, all right? So general rules of the O-line. All right. When in doubt, 
stay on the double team. General rules for the quarterback, basically give the football. It's better to be wrong than long. All right. In the, uh, in the system that I run, everyone gets the signal. All 11 guys look over at the sideline. We signal the play. Uh, any, any motion other than just basic motion. If I want no motion, I go like that, no motion. And if I want the slot to motion and then go back to where he came from, I call it twirl and I go like this. And if I want him to motion across and come back or the play actually determines which way he goes after that, I call it zip, go across the formation and I act like I'm zippering my pants, all right? But regular motion, we run it every day. He shouldn't, shouldn't need to know anything other than that. Um, but if we get a pressure look, the quarterback ain't inside the slots, throw quick, right? He'll, he'll check the quick game or he'll throw hot flash screen. So if the slots are split out off the line of scrimmage, right? We're in, we're in like a two by two formation spread and the slots are uncovered. They got six yards of grass between them and the defender. They'll just, they go like this. They got their hand down by their waist and they go like this. And the quarterback just looks, gives a nod. He's going to catch the ball, boom, and get it out to him. Kid's going to catch the ball and just run. Same thing with the receivers. If the receivers, if you're playing soft coverage, seven yards, you're playing cover three, our receivers, receivers can signal flash screen as well. All right. Um, made a living doing that. <laughs> it's really not that hard. Um, the X and Y push crack versus soft corner. All right. If you're playing a, a more of a cover two and we're running option at, at you to your side, the receiver will stock block the corner anytime there's a tighter, tighter coverage. Um, versus press coverage. Uh, receivers will outside release, drive for five, break down and stalk block, basically to try and get that guy to turn his back, give him the, uh, you know, the Top Gun Maverick swipe, slide by and then block. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off this thing quick. Um, tailback five yards, play side step, lateral step, make the pocket, roll over the football. Quarterback's job, top hand pressure into the belly to, belly to back. That lets him, though, clamp down on the ball. Quarterback, three and a half yards. Catch the snap, point the ball at the dive key. All right? What a lot of guys will tell you, you know, if you watch the under center guys, they do all that stuff with the boxes with their quarterbacks. They're taking the snap and they're hopping in and it's back shoulder, you know, chin, shoulder to shoulder, all that stuff. My, my deal is this. All right? Nobody smokes cigarettes anymore, but back in the old days when my mom and dad used to smoke in the 70s when I was a kid, my dad would smoke throw the ball, throw the cigarette on the ground, and he would kind of twist his foot and, and put it out. So literally, I told my quarterbacks, catch the ball and, and put the cigarette out. Just twist, all right? We don't get the ball way back because we're pointing the ball at the key right here and make our decision based on what he's doing because we're always giving less, all right? Front hand pressure right there, all right? If we know there's a pressure look, we'll sit the ball on the, on the back's hip give that proximity fake, even though the back knows he's not getting it, the quarterback knows he's not giving it. All right, the aiming point for the tailbacks, when they go in motion, it's the toes of the tailback. All right, leave his plate uh, as late as possible. That's where I went by, uh, you know, the fastest kid in your program. Like when we had Sean Darty when I was at Bates, Sean could leave two seconds after the snap and still be in pitch relationship because he was, I mean, his nickname was Juice for a reason. He was fast. Whereas when we had, you know, Mac Jackson, Mac was a tough dude. He loved to cut block, loved to, you know, loved the grind. He was a face-off guy in lacrosse, beast. And, uh, but he was a ham and egger when it came to speed, right? He didn't have great hips. He didn't have top-end speed. So he would have to take one or two steps to get going in motion. Um, and then once they're in pitch relationship, which for us is one by four, yard behind, four yards of width, all right? Keep the pitch relationship till you get to the second level. If the quarterback still got the ball, once he gets past the pitch key, he's going to tuck the football and the slot back's going to look for work. All right. He's going to go block for him. Oh, here's some of my, my pictures. I don't know how they magically showed up, but anyway, um, this is four, three, two high. We are playing a two high team here. Who's literally playing a stacked four, three, 
The linebacker, as you can see, to the field is outside the box. The three shade is to the field, just like I said. The one shade's to the boundary. The referee's kind of blocking them on the video. That split there, all right, the offensive line, the reason we do that is to because we want to widen the read as much as we can. So even though the three shade and the five shade are right next to each other, all right, the guard splits because he's covered. The tackles knows I don't ever block the five shade, so I'm uncovered. So he tightens. That's why they're foot to foot. Literally, when I'm coaching it, they step together. It's like a three-legged race when you tie kids' legs together at like the 4th of July festival, all right? And you boost that three-shade vertical. The tackle's job is to keep his shoulders square. So the five-shade's got to go around them, all right? Our tackles, these two guys in particular, Ryan West and Pride of Maine, and Liam O'Neill, just absolute grizzly bear monster. If I had a kid like him, Every year, I'd be the smartest offensive line coach in the country because he he got everything I ever taught him and brought it to the next level. Um, but anyway, those guys know, do not turn the shoulder. Stay square, three-legged man in an ass-kicking contest is what I used to say to those guys with the bubble teams. Boost that thing. Take your play side hand. So Liam's the, the, the tackle here. Liam would kind of just punch, all right? He would punch with his play side hand. All right, and cause that five shade to have to do that with his shoulders, which slows the read down for the tailback or the, for the quarterback. All right, so that's too high. There it is post snap. You see how the tackle is getting washed a little bit? It's because he's turning his hips. All right, actually, that's Liam there because they're on the right side. So that's, uh oh, that's Coach Weston. I don't want to say that, but Ryan, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to send Ryan a note telling him he turned his hips on a play, you know, 12 years ago. But anyway, you can see that, that our quarterback and our tailback are already meshed, and that five shade is nowhere in sight. That's give all day. You see the center and the one shade, right? The center and the backside guard boosting the one shade, right? Look at the linebacker behind that one shade. He has no idea where that ball is going to pop out, right? That's Ryan Cure at a tailback, too. So that's 230 pounds and super athletic from South Portland High School about to truck that dude. All right, here it is, verse 3-4 with the outside linebackers walked up, but still a too high look, all right? Their nose too, you know, th these guys like to play like four eyes to, to, to get you to guess. Well, as soon as the, the, the boundary, um, you know, defensive end is in a four eye, if we're running triple that way, my tackle's just gonna block them down. Him and the guard are gonna boost it to the play side linebacker. Slot's gonna go up to the play side safety and we're out the gate. This play in particular right here, pre-snap, all right, that's it. We, we were going to the field. Let me see if I can go back, all right? We were going this way to the field. Can you guys see my cursor on the screen? All right, we were going this way to the field. So there's the dive key or the handoff key, and there's the option key. He is a true five technique. He's a hard bend, all right? He is a hard bend to the quarterback, all right? Or at least he did a lot. Oh, there he is. He's actually not a hard bend. He's playing the cue. All right. Nope. All right. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's the five technique getting washed down. So that's a pull read. He's going to pitch the ball to this guy. The quarterback should come off and pitch right off of this, this cat here. All right. Next, 4-4, four, four, one high. All right. That's as vanilla as you get on defense. Um, our splits would be to the field, to the big field side, that would be the three shade split. So those guys would widen. The reason the, the splits will vary will be based on the athlete. So our left guard was a kid by the name of uh, Mark Sylvester. Mark was a really, really athletic big guy. He was fast, he was athletic, and so was Ryan Weston. So those guys, they could always open their splits more based on their ability their athletic ability. The right guard was a 300 pounder plus, you know, he used to tell me he was 280, so he's probably 306, 309. Um, and, and he was a heavy, more of a heavy footed, but he was a freaking, you know, he was a guy, he was a road grader. But so his split when he was to the three shade side wouldn't be quite as big as Sly's, just based on his ability to protect. If the linebacker walks up, you gotta be able to block him.
There it is, all right? You see that the, the three shade here is getting blocked down. The play side tackle, because the three shade spark, or the one shade sparked away, the play side tackle is climbing square to the play side linebacker. Here's the play side slot arc release into the linebacker. Those two dudes seal that. That's going to be a huge problem for Williams because this kid's going to come down hard and not be there in time to get our tailback. And our tailback's going to squeeze this double team because his, his aiming point is play side foot of the center. So he's squeezing that double team. And based on the, the picture right there, those two feet in the ground by that defensive end, tells me there's no way he can tackle our tailback. And our quarterback sees that too. He's given the football. All right. And by the way, that play went down to about the four yard line. All right. A bunch of different compliments to our offense, flip option, load option, pitch option, cut option, which was put in completely by accident because my tailback, we kept getting a hard bend, hard bend, hard bend. And my tailback came off the field. He said, coach, I'm going to have a concussion by the end of the first quarter. This DN is freaking kicking my butt. Trevor's pulling the ball and pitching it every play because they were sending hard at the dive, hard at the kid. We're pitching, pitching, pitching. I said, okay. I said, the next time I call triple, which is going to be the first play of the next series, because we only have one play, you are going to, to take a fake, step over the ball, and cut that dude and equal the score. And I want you to go down on his dive board and send his butt over his head. And sure enough, tailback rolled over the ball, took his second step, took his third step, Forearm on the thigh, on the outside thigh, and that kid's feet, he did like the, you know, the skateboard scorpion. The kid's heels hit his, the back of his head. He flipped over and laid on the ground. Their coach is yelling that that's illegal, you know, that, that that's a cheap shot and all this other stuff. He hit him above the knees, and he hit him on the play side thigh board, and that kid's 285 pounds, my tailback's 200. So, Sorry. But those are some of the compliments. I'm not going to get into those. I'm going to exit. Um, and I'm going to try and bring up Paul's share. And I'm trying to get back to my stop. Here. There we go. I'm trying to get back to my screen so you guys can see the, uh, the whiteboard behind me. Can everybody see that? If not, I can move my computer in as much as I can. Oh, we got All, right. You, All right. So. I don't have a defense drawn up because I just want to talk about this is we're on the left hash. All right. So the big field is that way. The three technique would be to the big field. All right. So this split again, based on ability, this guy could be anywhere from, you know, one yard, three feet to almost five or five and a half feet. All right. Again, it all depends on the guy. Play side tackle, all right? He's uncovered because in a four-man front, that's the read. We don't block the read. So he's saying, I'm uncovered. I get a tighten. That's what causes this to be toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Guys, when I see toe-to-toe, -to -toe, um, I mean our feet are touching. If I can put one playing card between your feet, you're doing it wrong, all right? And the reason I'm a stickler for that stuff is because literally I want your, your feet your knees, your hips, your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists, everything together so we can get vertical push on that dude, on that three technique, all right? Because if that three technique is a true, you know, let's say in high school, he's a 250, 260 pound kid. He's an all-conference kid. You know, we played against a couple guys this year. Kid from Paquanic, big kid, all right? 250, 260 pounds. If that kid is there and I got two 200-pound linemen, I got 400 versus 280. And if they're using proper technique and they're squeezing knees, hips, ankles, shoulders, wrists, and elbows, sooner or later, I'm going to move you, all right? Because it's 400 versus 260, 270, 280, every play. Now, we, only may, we may only get three and a half, four yards first half. Sooner or later, we're going to break that kid's will, all right? So there's the whole mentality of that behind us. Um, to this side, the one shade would be here, all right? So the guard knows, hey, one shade's inside shade. I'm going to squeeze because I'm covered, all right? And I'm to the back side. I'm going to squeeze, boundary side. Center knows, block my backside gap. So there's our double team there, all right? 
Now, backside tackle. His job is, I call it gap, seal, funnel, or hinge. Basically, step with your inside foot so that dude can't come across your face, all right? If the backside defensive end can't get across my face, I step inside foot, second step, I'm into him. Keep him there. I tell my guys, get oxygen when the ball ain't coming to you. Catch, catch, catch the dude, but don't let him push you backwards, all right? Again, aiming point for the, the tailback, play side foot of the center. He's going to go like this, one, two, and roll over the football, all right? Boom, downhill, all right? These two guys are on that. Now, there's linebackers in this game. Last time I checked, all right? These two guys are double teaming, and they're going vertical. This linebacker inevitably does this. He stands in place and bounces, or he takes two steps forward, and he's going like this. And the reason he's doing that is because he's not sure because he's seen film on us. The tailback could hit here. The tailback could hit outside the double team, or the tailback sometimes goes back there. And they all think that's three different plays. Oh, the coach is telling them to go that way. I've never told anybody where – I've never coached a running back on how to run the football. You know, I just say you're back there because you're, you know, you're capable of doing it. Hold on to the ball, don't fumble. So these guys will boost this to the double, to the double team, to the linebacker. All right. Here's the read right there. That's the handoff kick. If he comes down hard and flat, quarterback's pulling the football, tailback is going to slide and glide, play side linebacker to play side safety. The slot versus eight man front is arc release, linebacker to safety. Same rule. Same rule. So you're getting double seals all across the front side. On the back side, double, stay vertical, linebacker, boom. All right? This guy, leave as late as you can to get in pitch relationship. Read key, option key. Play side, wide receiver, push crack to the safety. All right? You'll hear, oh, well, we'll just crack replace. Okay, great. You're at seven yards playing cover three. You're backpedaling for four. You're now at 11, 12 yards. You're going to T-step with a division three or a high school kid with bad hips. He's got to come downhill and tackle one of my best athletes in space. Okay. Well, I'll just put one of my running backs out there. Okay. Well, your running backs usually play linebacker. So now you're taking one of your best athletes out of the box. So now I know my tailback's going to run for 300. So pick your poison. All right. So that's basic verse. Uh, a cover three shell, one high shell, very basic option. Any questions on anything you want to see there? I can draw it up to the shade five side. It's the same thing. Double team to the play side linebacker, block down, stay square, block down on the play side linebacker, read key, option key. These guys block back. You know, it's pretty simple stuff. Any questions so far? Coach, on that one, is the center and the play side guard, is one of them working back to the backside backer? Yes. Yes, I drew it up play side. I, I apologize for that. Yeah, they're working to the first man on the backside of the midline. Yep. All right. You split the offense in half. They're working back to the first linebacker because you're blocking back on the three and five with your guard and tackle. All right. The play side tackle, his job, again, don't turn your hips to go down to that first linebacker in the box. Stay square. Climb vertical and then block. All right, that linebacker will come to you. He will tell you if the tailback's got the ball or not. If the tailback's got the ball and he's worth the salt, he's coming downhill, you'll meet him a yard over the line of scrimmage. And as long as your shoulders stay square, you can't get condensed by the by the DN. You know, a lot of guys, um, when we first started running this in the NESCAC when I was at Bates, a lot of guys were trying to squeeze and pop. Their DN would squeeze the five. You know, squeeze the tackle's hip, push him down, push him down, and then pop out and try and play the quarterback. They were trying to double play. Well, we, me, I was not coaching the detail of staying square with my shoulders and my hips, the play side tackle. As soon as I clean that up and your five technique is trying to push Ryan Weston or Liam O'Neill or any other tackle we had, and they're square, and they're low, it, it, it negated that as a technique, and it literally took probably 
three series of a game to figure that out. And I was like, guys, just, you got to do a better job staying square. Um, and it was actually in that, that Tufts game where you saw, I showed you that where I said I was going to have to send Ryan a note. Um, so any questions so far? If we're going to a three down front, again, I draw it up with just, just the offense so I can go through the explanation. A three down front, am I covered or uncovered? The guards, the guards are uncovered, they squeeze, right? Tackles say, I'm uncovered. I'm good, all right? I mean, we're going generic here, all right? So this look here ends up being a three-man plow to the backside linebacker, all right? We're going here, all right? I always, it's been a while since I've been drawing the option, so I'm gonna do this. Coach White. All right, square, yes. Uncovered and covered. What is the rules? Yeah. Like how did, how do they determine if it's is a shade covered? A three a three technique is covered, the guards covered. How about a one a technique five, like a covered. five or seven or six? Like is that covered yeah, yeah. or uncovered? Like well they got they know because this is what you know, we don't one of the you know because you're an option guy, Don. Um one of the things that we do um it is as we're going through this stuff on the whiteboard, we tell them what to expect. We never block the read key or the handoff key. So versus three, four, we know he's the read key, right? So I want to wipe the tackles rule is widen the freaking the read key as much as we can. I don't care if you got to help the guard or not. Widen the freaking three, or you know, widen the read, widen the handoff key. So here. That's the four or five foot split. Liam O'Neill, Ryan Weston, the two kids I had at Bates, but you know, Ryan was a basketball player. He was freaking center on the basketball team. Dude could run, widen, five feet, six feet, be ridiculous. As long as you can protect this area here. So it's more about staying square for me. Um, did, did that answer the question enough, Don? Yeah, it did for me, yep, yep. Because you know, a lot, of, here's the deal, all right? Let's say they're going to bring a pressure look. Here's what's going to happen. That kid's not going to be a true five and try and spark all the way inside. He's going to wind up heavy, head up. That's a tip because my, my tackles know, man, that dude's head up, he's sparking inside, or he's going to feather out and the linebacker's coming hard. So the play side tackle with any experience, he's immediately looking at the read key saying, where's this dude to line? Because a lot of times what they'll do is, right, they'll start to bring a pressure look. They'll walk the linebacker into kind of a no man's land, and they'll stack this saying, one of these guys is going inside and one of them is going outside. Well, the quarterback and the, and the tackle and the tailback, I mean, this is what we do. They're sitting there going, great. These, these freaking morons, we're going to pitch the football or we're going to pop a A-gap dive here, and it's going to be for six. Tackle's following his rules. Stepping down hard inside, staying square, and climbing to my play side linebacker. If this guy sparks, he's on my track. I don't ever pass up a good block for a bad one. So if that guy sparks to a four eye on the snap, he blocks him because he's in my path to the linebacker. All right? Now, the one thing I will tell you is three-man snowplow to the backside linebacker, right? This guy's climbing. He's not completely lost. He's going to help his friend if this dude's walked up. He'll kind of at least chip it and stay with him, all right? Because if we get that and this, play side slot knows I got play side linebacker to, or uh, arc release to the safety because it's one high, all right? The play side guard, again, we do this every day. We're seeing the three down front. The play side guard knows linebacker walks up. I got to help my boy to tackle because if they got a game on, that could co create a little bit of an issue. So he walks up, the guard will block him. These two go to the backside. Play side tackle steps down square, goes to climb, end crosses his face, he blocks him. The end doesn't cross his face because the end feathers and the backer comes. If that backer's at depth, we don't care. 
if that backer is at four yards with his feet, you know, one behind the other, big eyes, depth eyes, leverage, but he's at four yards, if he's not at, at a now level, meaning on the line of scrimmage that somebody's got to block him right now, we'll let him come. And the quarterback will read him as the dive key. We call it a loaded read. He'll read him as the dive key, which if that dude's coming with his hair on fire, he's going to hit the tailback. So the quarterback's going to read it, pull it, and then you got problems because the safety's coming down or you're sending Cowboy, and we're going to read that as the pitch. Whoever, again, play side slot, go into your play side safety. So if you plan on doing this little game and sending the play side safety down, I plan on scoring a touchdown because I'm going to pitch the football and watch you go, shit, that didn't work. All right? A lot of guys, uh, Colby used to send boundary Cowboy. You know, try and get into some kind of too high and send a boundary cowboy. And that's fine. We would let the cowboy come, pitch off the cow off the corner blitz, double seal the play side safety. Bye-bye. Um, one other thing I want to show about coverage is that that team started to do to us, and I quickly found an answer for it. What they did was we would send this guy in motion, two high teams, doesn't matter, four, three, two higher or three, four, too high. We would send this guy in motion for triple, and they would start sliding this guy. And then they would send, you know, this guy to the pitch. This guy would come, and he would go to the quarterback. And they would try and send two guys at the dive. They tried all kinds of stuff where the backside safety. Then they knew we were blocking them like that. So they would have this guy sit, and this guy would shuffle with the motion and send him to the pitch. So then it took me all of about four minutes to say, hey, if they do that, we're going to run bomb, which was both receivers block back. Bomb, B-O-M-B, both back, B-B. So the play side slot would block back, play side receiver would block back, because inevitably – they were playing quarter, quarter halves to that. These two guys are coming, and they would drop this guy into some no man's land coverage because they weren't afraid that we were going to throw the ball over the top because, by and large, everybody had better athletes than us. So that's kind of a coverage, how to block up a shell if they start playing some funky stuff with you. Um, you know, you're starting to see a lot more 3-3 stack. Um, Coach Kempton and I used to kick this one around back in the day, right? You get the nose, the two fives, linebackers. And this is where, you know, I'll tease Kempy for a minute and he had his outlaw, his, you know, buck, his, you know, you Pat, he had all kinds of stuff. I used to tease him about all the names he had for them cats. I just get guys like you're on the left side. So you're the L you're on the right side. So you're the R you play tailback. So you're the T and uh, you two guys on the outside are, um, well, you're the faster guy. So we'll call you the X and you line up on the backside of any call of any formation. And we'll call this guy the Y and you always line up to the play side. Old, you know, uh, two back, pro twins kind of general rules all right always run up to the sign of strength you always line up to the back side anyway so the first thing we would do here is we would figure out um you know can't be called these guys down safety so i'll put them there by the way chris never lined up like that and if a three three stack team's lining up like that it's their first year in the stack all right um but for argument's sake our rules Step down hard inside, work to your linebacker, arc release to the first linebacker because it's one high, linebacker to safety. All right, work your double team to the linebacker. Work your double team or block back because you're on the backside, climb, post that. What I would say is hand, but my eyes are to my backer. Put your hand on the down man and put your eyes on the backer. You're on the backside of the play. So technically these guys, he would work to that, all right? Now, on paper, that looks beautiful because everybody is where they're supposed to be. Read key, option key. That's simple to read. All right? So Chris decides, you know what? I'm going to walk my play side linebacker down. Well, the tackle would just block that. All right? Tackle would just block down on that. All right? Chris decides, 
he's going to do his old, we're going to stack. One guy's going to go inside. One guy's going to go outside. End goes inside, tackle blocks him. Backer goes inside, tackle blocks him. Slot knows whoever comes to me is the guy I'm going to block because that's what I do. I block play side linebacker to play side safety. All right. And it's mirrored on to, to the boundary because they're a three, three stack team. Uh, questions on that. And can't be, you know, don't, don't be asking me hard questions. You know, 11 guys yeah. over on defense. I don't even know what you call them. Hey, Daryl, on, on the front side of that 3-3 three, three stack, if the tackle pinches and the backer comes over the top, does the slot pass him up and continue on to the three? No. If he runs over the top and the tackle goes like that, is that what you're saying, no. Mike? No. Slot oh, stays on. No. I'm sorry. Other way around. Tackle's out, backer's in. DN's – oh, the backer goes inside? Right. Will the slot pass up that tackle and continue on to the free safety if he's sparking out? Yeah. If the end does that, yeah, he'll just work linebacker, and he knows that my linebacker disappeared, he'll just work up to the safety. Sure. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Any other questions? All right. Any other defensive fronts anybody wants to see? Because I, I want to show um, the one, the common pressure that we used to get a ton of. Right? He says he wants to be a dink and asks about uh, down safety pressure off the edge. Say it again. Tempe's trying to be a dink. He says, uh, what about down safety pressure off the edge? Whatever. Send him back to out, outside academy over there. X splits off the edge with the defensive end and the down safety. Spark, right? No. Nope. No, nope. defensive end up the field, outside. Defensive end outside. Down safety underneath. Down safety underneath. Wonderful. With, 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 with the backer coming inside. This backer. Yeah. Beautiful. So that's right. We should give the football there. We should give the football. We're working that double team there. Right? Nose and backer. That right. attack, staying square. Right? He, he's going to step and try to punch that five technique. You're telling me the five's coming straight up the field. He's stepping away from it. Eyes to the backer. Boom! Collision to backer. Screws at a helmet. I got this from a great defensive coach one time. Screws at <laughs> a helmet. Tackling. So I used the same terminology on my side of the ball so it was not the Fort Gun kids. I said, hey, screws of our helmet, the linebacker throw. Rattle his cage, right? If that tackle gets your linebacker, boom, rattles his cage. By the time that kid's boogers get out of his nose a little bit, the tailback's up the chute, right, making his decision. Because you got to remember, we're at three and a half and five, so, so it's the time, right? It's the timing in a play. So we're going to collision that. And as long as we smack that guy a little bit, that's give all the way. Because the read keeping on the field. And as soon as the read takes a step up the field, the quarterback's giving the ball. And now what we got to do is pop that dude in the mouth. You with me, Chris? I got it, brother. I yeah. think the I think the big key that you've stressed is the shoulder square because that's a pain in the ass for defensive ends or any kind of pressure off the edge. That yeah. really makes it difficult to get to your landmark on a blitz or a spark or just a bend. Yeah, and the one thing, whether I'm coaching, you know it. I'm, I'm stepping to my backside gap in a triple option scheme, right? But so my eyes are going to where I'm going, but my hand is always, you know, punching. So if I'm running, like I, I'm coaching in the inside outside zone right now. And I tell my guys, eyes in your play side gap, hand in the backside gap, just to feel movement, right? Because if I'm a guard and I got a two tap, you know, a head up two who's sparking away and I'm running inside zone right, you know, I don't, I don't want to necessarily just leave him one-on-one -on -one for the center because he's not in my, on my tracks. I got to help the dude. You know, that, that guy snapping the ball has got one hand between his legs. He needs a little help. So as I step, right, and I get my second step in the ground, I'm starting to climb vertical. I should be eyes through my play side gap, hand in the backside gap. Well, it's kind of the same thing you know, 
in the option except my eyes are in my backside gap and my hand is in the play side gap. All right, so, you know, I, I, I'm able to transfer a lot of the things that I've taught from the wing tee to the eye, to the inverted wishbone, to the spread, to inside outside zone, to the triple. Keep it simple for the kids. I, you know, I talked more about coverage today than I think in 15 years I've ever talked about coverage in terms of uh, dealing with the kids. All right. You know, when I, when I first started, you know, uh, coordinating the offense and too high, we're going to call it dime. One high, we're going to call it nickel. Zero, we're going to call it penny. You, you know, that took me about four weeks to say, I can't freaking remember which is which. So why don't I just call it too high, one, cut, one high or zero? Um, I don't use words uh, that a kid might misinterpret. You know, when uh, Tommy Hines tells a story, Tommy was a wide receivers guy for us. He had coached at Coney High School. He told a story. He was coaching defensive backs. It's like the state playoffs, Eastern Maine finals, state finals. And he's shouting out onto the field. And the kid kind of turns towards the sideline and shakes his head, yes. Well, Tommy was relaying a really important piece of information in regards to coverage. And the kid shook his head, yes. Tommy thought the kid understood that he was talking to him. The kid was shaking his head yes at another player on the field who was talking to him. Well, inevitably, the ball gets thrown over the top because they got guys running two different coverages. They lose the game, and he says to the kid, I told you, da -da 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 -da. And, and the kid says, Coach, I was nodding yes to the corner. You know, I'm a safety, and I was shaking my head yes to the corner, and I never heard you say what you were saying. So Tommy, in his positional meeting, always said, answer, it's, it's, it's twofold. It's, it's a form of respect by saying, yes, coach. But it's also a form of, I've communicated something to you, and you've communicated back that you heard me, and you understand what I'm telling you to do. And I kind of took that when Tommy taught me that my first year at Bates. And I've been coaching a while, but at the time I learned that. And, but I took that and I said to myself, you can apply that in so many different areas. Sim simplify your communication um, in everything that you do. You know, we get together as coaches and we start talking about, we're reading two to one. They're rolling strong. They're rolling weak. Let me tell you how a 16-year-old quarterback in high school is rolling. He's rolling in at three o'clock and he's rolling out at six. And he ain't thinking about football. He's thinking about, you know, meeting the cheerleaders and making sure his snap face page and his, you know, his bird account and his FaceTime and all that is up to date. His Insta snap story is good. You know what I mean? He, he could give two craps about what you're telling him. So simplify it. Understand the kids spend three hours a day on football. You know, we spend every waking moment thinking about it. It's important to them, but, but it's, it's, it's within reason. They have other concerns when they're 15 to 22 years old, right? So communicating stuff simply. You know, people ask me, oh, do you have line calls? No. Do you guys pull and trap? No. And, you know, I can stand up here and run power. I can run trap. I can run counter. I can run uh, all kinds of stuff and show you the intricacies of it. But again, Coach Harriman said to me one thing. He says, Daryl, we got, we got 23 practices or 22 practices and we kick the ball off and we got to play Trinity, who's the league champs, to start the year off. Or we got to play Amherst, who's either the league champs or the runner-up every freaking year. So what can we get good at? And simplifying, you know, so we simplified everything we did. Our pass game. You know, our quick pass game was um, we were all hand signals, but if we were using words, the words matched up with the routes. So all of our pass game was um, colleges, okay? So if we said Arizona State, all right, Arizona State was arrow by the inside guys and slants by the outside guys. 
So our quarterback could go up there and yell, Sun Devil, Rocket. We're going to throw Arizona State to the right. If there was eight inside the slots, right, and we had a triple call, he would, he would audible to that. Hitch, Hawaii, right, hang loose. There's the hand signal. I mean, the kids develop the system. Some of the signals, um, basically 95% of the signals come from, the, from the, the kids telling me what's easiest to communicate to them. Um, so simplifying your communication in, in any offense, but in the triple, being able to strangle teams with speed. Like, you got to remember, when you're running the triple option and a team's preparing for you, your best chance of scoring is the first series of the game because I don't care how, oh, we prepare without a ball. Oh, we give all three backs the ball. We do this. We do that. Well, you know what? No one scout team in the entire world, including a Clemson and Alabama, as good as the first team guys, or they would be first team guys. So there's your first issue. The second issue is the other coaching staff, no matter how good they are, how much experience they got, can they communicate your offense effectively to the scout team guys to run it to, at your speed, at game speed? The answer is no. So you look at the years we were pretty good, you know, at – Rockland when I was in Maine and even at Westbrook. And then you look at Bates, the years we were pretty good. We were winning four or five games, you know, and that don't sound like a lot, but if you understand the league, that's pretty good. Um, and you look at our first de- our, our first series of the first half scores. I mean, we either scored or kicked a field goal, I would say in 80% of the games. I can remember, you know, Trinity comes up to play us. And we run like 13 triple options in a row, just literally signal triple, run it. And I would either signal flip it or run it again. And we're going, and we're going like my slot back came off the field. Who's our best player threw up and said, coach, you got to slow the tempo down. And my response to him was colorful, but basically what I communicated to him was, Hey man, it's your fault. You're not in shape. And, uh, the reason we were able to roll down the field was the temp number one, the tempo, but number two, they had no clue about um, the speed of what the option was going to look like. And they're a really well coached. Their head coach is a defensive guy oversees their defense. They got better players and we were able to take care of that because of our tempo and because of, you know, given we chose an offense that gave us the best chance to beat the best teams on our schedule. Um, any questions, anything you want me to cover? I want to, if I can show you guys the basic rules of our play action pass off of triple, I think that's a good um, selling point for you guys. All right. Now, coach, do you close your splits down when you're throwing play action? My answer is no, because again, I'm not, I'm not a guy who's going to tip you off, all right? If everybody in the stadium thinks on fourth and six inches, I'm going to line up in two tight ends, full house backfield, run power ride dive, I might line up like that. I'm either going to shift the five wide empty and throw it deep, or I'm going to line up like that, play action and throw a tight end, you know, flood, some kind of flood concept. I'm going to do the unexpected whenever you expect me to do something else. I want you as confused about what I just said as I am, okay? Because I don't ever want anyone having a beat on me. Again, as a high school football coach, in all the years I was a head coach, I think I punted probably a total of six times. Mike Hathaway coached with me in the Lobster Bowl. They asked my crazy butt to be the head coach one year. What did we do? We started off with an onside kick. First of all, it's an all-star game. Second of all, Hey, man, that's how I roll. I don't punt. I always go for two. And I'm going to onside kick you. I'm going to pop it up in the air. I'm going to find a way to find your weakness, to cause you to have to practice other stuff so you can get ready for the triple. Anything I can do to make you nuts about something else that I'm doing that takes your focus away from what I really want to do to you is how I roll. Um, But let me go through the play action. Kempe and Skip, do you guys uh, think – Think that was an accurate assessment of how I operate? (laughs) 
Uh, is anybody still listening? Like, I'm good, Mike? I'm here, Coach. Yeah, we still got guys in here, man. Keep going. Yeah, play action pass. Again, whether it's one high or two high, we're on the left hash, four down front. I'm not going to draw the linemen. I'm going to draw the two linebackers, the outside backers. I'm going to draw the safety and the two corners. And then I'll draw it up versus two high. All right. We will, all right. Again, all we do is option. Um, this, you know, one thing that I'll tell you is I, I'm, I can't give you everything in, a, in an hour or two. You want to call me on the phone and talk for six hours, I'll send you the whole presentation, all of my stuff, all of my info, and I'll teach you every intricacy. I'll roll with that, but, but that's going to take at least four hours. But anyway, um, throw in the football, all right? We will tell this guy, let's say this is Sean Darty, who doesn't have to leave till the ball is snapped. I'll tell him, hey, make sure you're in one step motion when we go to pro play action. So I'll give you my signal for this formation. This formation is deuce. This is our base formation, okay? The X and the Y always line up on the ball. The L and the R are always off the ball. I don't care what formation we're in. So the L and the R are the adjusters. They, they, the L can never line up outside the R. The R can never line up outside the L. So if we move to trips, we go like this, all right? Guys move to the other side of the midline. The X and the Y, no. All right, they're always on the line of scrimmage. The X and the Y line up here, here, or here. The slots line up here, here, or here. And when I say that, they, the slots are off the line of scrimmage as number one, they're in a true twins look as number two, or they're in the slot as number three, as number two. All right, that, that's the three places they line up. So if we're gonna run play action, boom, two steps, all right? We got man slide protection. Play side guard, we're running triple pass right, first down man, tackle, second down man, tailback, right, runner or blocker, never a faker. He knows he's not getting the ball, so now he's a blocker. He's going to give me a good dive, the quarterback's going to put the ball on the hip, proximity fake, he's going to roll over, and he's got play side linebacker one to play side linebacker two, okay? Center, nose to your backside gap. This is the slide side, right, through A gap. Guard, nose to your backside gap, through B gap. Nose to your backside gap, through C gap. The slot can do a couple things. We'll talk about him in a minute. Play side slot, arc release, just like you're looking linebacker to safety. Sit down at 10 yards and show your chest to the quarterback. Play side slot, push cracks every damn play. Verse cover three, he does this, and then he goes over the top. Inevitably, the safety is sliding with the motion. He sees the slot coming. He sees all this action coming like this. It's either triple or, oh, no, they're going to throw it. It's play action. He jumps this. Corner's passing that off to the safety. He's also got triple coming at him, so he might be the late fill and, you know, fill and tackle guy, whatever you defensive guys call that stuff over there. All right, so we're looking one to two, right? Throw the home run ball, right? And we'll skinny this a little bit. It's a post, but just get inside the coverage and go vertical, all right? We don't spend 900 hours throwing the ball, all right? Our practice plan reflects what we do in the game. So if we're going to run the ball 70% of the time, 70% of our practice plan is going to be running the ball, okay? That's one thing I think a lot of coaches miss out on. We all like to throw the football, even me. Um, but I think it's important that, you know, us being, a, uh, when, again, being a triple option team in high school and in college, I got better and more refined at it every year. And as the years went on, my practice plans got more and more detailed towards the run game and pass game was mixed in situationally. And I think that's important to understand. So that's the kind of look we get. There's a couple things you can do. If the slot back sees pressure, and, but he's not sure if he's going to drop out or not. Um, he'll, he'll motion and twirl back and block because he can't see what's behind him to protect the backside of the quarterback, all right? The backside receiver is takeoff, all right? And you guys all know the even I'm leaving, you know, saying, if I get to 10 and I'm even, I'm leaving. Just keep going. But verse cover three, 
the corner bound. He's still over the top. Pre-clinic, I said, you know, if he's over the top, attack it with speed. Well, we don't have speed. So if we get to 10, he's still over the top. We'll crank it for two more to 12 and then break it to the out. All right. Quarterback's looking here. If we have no pressure off the weak side, these guys are all doing their thing and dropping, right? And dropping, all right? The slot back will carry out and sit here in the flat, widening this guy, trying to get some width in here. Maybe open that up if the safety jumps the top, all right? This guy will sit down, show his chest to the quarterback. If they're in zone, he's playing dive, then he's jumping underneath that. He'll just shuffle out. This is holding this guy, getting this guy to widen a little bit. So that's, that's basically what we would do versus uh, a one-hide safety look. Uh -oh, where's my rag? All right, I got it. All right, versus two-hide, big adjustment. I mean, all kinds of new theories here versus two-hide. You know, again, three backers, right? He's motioning. All right, we're going to do the same thing. All right, it, it's literally the same play. We're going to dive over to football. Again, we're going to be reading depth, size, and leverage. Nose to the backside gap, nose to the backside gap, nose to the backside gap. Down man one, down man two, all right? Arc release, these guys, if they're true hash safeties, right? Because everybody says, oh, we sit on the hash. All right. If they're true hash safeties, give them what they want to see. Run right to the hash and sit down in front of them, okay? If this guy's a true cor cover corner, right? He's a cover corner, just slip inside, go vertical. If they're, if they're a true funnel cover two corner, slip inside, go vertical. That's great. If not, Right? If they're playing quarter, quarter, half, and that guy's over the top at 12, or if, at 10, if I'm even, I'm leaving. Inside leverage, I'm even, I'm leaving. If not, carries the 12, break it to the outside. All right? Same rules here. Widen them or twirl back if we got some kind of extra pressure. All right? This guy will, here's the big adjustment. You ready? Slice in front of the backside safety so he doesn't get involved. Try to run in the window between the linebacker and the safety and get open, right? Sit down versus zone, run versus man. He covers, he's covering, he's covering. Just work in the window, work in the window. If we're throwing out, we got problems. Here's the bottom line, all right? Your quarterback has to have uh, a launch point a read, and an escape, All right? Those are three things that I believe in if you're going to throw the football. So in drop back and play action pass in our offense, the quarterback's job is know his launch point, right? Step here, three-step drop, reading it, right? Whatever I tell him the read is. And usually we read literally one guy because we're an option team. We don't want if we're throwing back here, we got freaking Tom Brady playing quarterback and I'm running the wrong offense, right? It's a read here, and then we're getting into our escape route. Escape, right? We got the three-shape block. We got the five-shape block. They're doing their, you know, fat guy bumping each other, doing all that stuff. The linebacker's out. He's blocking. The guard's looking for work. They're double-teaming those. The tailback came through. The linebacker's dropping. The cover is. The quarterback will pull the ball down and run QB draw straight out of the Tony DeMeo, you know, buy his book for $21.99 and he'll show you that. I'll give it to you for nothing. QB draw. So the quarterback pops back. He doesn't like anything. He's tough the ball, find open grass and run forward. Go for four. Because, you know, collegiately, punting the football and changing field position is better for us to do than to throw a pick or take a sack. Um, it's really important that if you're going to teach these things and then you go to seven on seven and everything's covered and your quarterback goes and he just spikes the ball, that you absolutely unleash a world of hurt on the kid and say, what is your escape route? 
You know what I mean? You're going to run the football there. Like, hold them accountable because on Saturday, he will throw the ball away. He'll throw a pick. He'll take a sack because he didn't practice what you told him to do. He, you got to tell him, show him, and then make him practice it. All right? Um, questions? Anything? I might be the most boring speaker on the planet then. Any questions? We good? Anybody out there got some questions? You can turn on your mic and get in here if you do. Mike, I was either thorough or terrible. You're good, man. It brings back old memories of just sitting around a grease board talking stuff up. Yeah, I mean, anybody, listen, if you guys want, I can show a quick game real quick just to talk about escape route because I think I love, Mike, I, love your, I love your escape stuff, Bob, the quick game. All right. Debbie, I gave it to you because you asked. This is my favorite stuff. True down I, want, I wanted to see your end over on balance stuff earlier, but I didn't want to interrupt. Listen to you. Listen to you, end over on balance. I don't do that crazy yeah. stuff. That's good stuff. If That's a good. team comes out and you're an option team and they're a four down front, they're playing four four, right? They're an even front. The first thing you want to do is have an unbalanced set in your first series of the game to see how they're going to react. Jump into it, let the guy in the booth chart it for you, and if they don't adjust, I mean, you got them out flank before you snap the damn ball. That's the first thing. Um, you know, if a team is a field boundary team and they're an odd front team, right, put the formation into the boundary and see how they react to that because we found that with Trinity. Trinity's a three, four, two high field boundary personnel, right? All, all the thick, heavy dudes go into the boundary, and all the dudes who can run and cover grass go to the field. So I said, Chris, hey, what if I took trips and put it into the boundary and we ran triple to the field? He goes, D, they're going to have to do one of two things. They're either going to have to take the speed guys and put them into the boundary and put the, the fat guys to the field, or they're going to leave field and boundary alone, and then you can you can throw against the neck rolls into the boundary, throw quick screen and all that kind of stuff, mess around with your your little trips, pick plays. I'm sorry, we call them rub routes. To coach everything, don't ever call it a pick play, call it a rub route. I almost got punched for that one. Anyway, quick pass game. All right, quick game is gap protection. All five of the linemen are stepping to their play side. So if we go, I just I just showed you. This is deuce, right? This is deuce formation. This is the signal. I point, put my pointer finger up, I put my arm out like that. I go deuce. Arizona State is sun devils. So I take my thumb and I point towards the sun. Deuce, Arizona State, I'm doing it with my right hand. I have a wristband on my right hand. I have nothing on my left arm. This is how it would look on game day, okay? So all the kids on the field are looking. I got my right my right arm covered. I got three guys signaling. So, you know, because in college it looks cool. You know, I, I don't know why we ever did that. It didn't matter anyway. All right. Deuce, Arizona State. All right. Let me get a triple because everybody has to have them. Deuce, triple. All right. Quarterback was up there Sunday, second sound, first day of the week. Monday it's on one, Tuesday's on two. Quarterback was up there. 99% of the time we're on Sunday. So the quarterback sees it. He goes, Sunday, Sunday. Said hit. Boom, we're off and running. And, I, you know, I used to do Sunday, April, April, Sunday. Of course, crap. Just freaking snap it in. All right. Anyway, 4-4, four, 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 cover three. Four, four. Your screen is frozen. All right. Sure. Your screen, screen is frozen, is so we can't see anything you're drawing. Oh, we got you back now. You good? Yeah, we're good. Right. So, four, four, cover three. Quick game. All right. Quick game, Arizona State. Thumb up, Arizona State. Zero to seven yards by the play side slot, looking over the outside shoulder. Dip, grab grass, and run the seven yards. Bottom of the numbers. Always receivers, always have their inside foot up. Three steps. One, two, three, hard slant. There's our read. No one else. Read the flat defender. 
if it's a safety, if it's a tackle, if it's a spinner, if it's a punter, I don't care who the guy is, read the dude who's in the fly. He runs with the arrow, throw the slant. He runs with the, he sits on the slant, throw the arrow. Because he's a couple of three corners. All right. Here's the deal. Everybody block your place like yeah, right? Never step away from a good block for a bad one. So my 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 eyes is here, right? Play side linebacker on a run through through my yeah. If he's at depth, his feet are equal, and his eyes aren't big, he's probably not blitzing, all right? So as if I'm the center, I'm gonna snap the ball. I'm gonna post my backside, put my eyes in my place side yeah. Guard, block your gap, tackle. Same thing. Eyes here, right? Step size leverage. Nothing, no crazy business coming. Step, eyes, hand in the backside gap, post the five. Backside uh, tailback, right? Tailback's job in pass protection. His aiming point, pre-snap, inside the foot of the tackle. So as the tackle punches and steps, he now, by the time he gets there, he's at the tackle's outside foot, shoulder to shoulder. Place backside slot, pin, and block down. Force the five shades to the tackle. Force the five shades to the tailback. Push him inside. All right. His cadence. If I, you guys, uh, Mike Hathaway's team is the Levitt Hornets. So if I'm the backside slot and I want to teach this guy how to release after he blocks this, it, it would be Hornets ball now. He's saying it in his head. Hornets ball now. Every day during seven on seven and quick game practice, they're blocking down on a hand shield and they're saying out loud, every one of the slots that's practicing on the backside is saying, Hornets ball now. All right. Quarterback pops up, he makes his read. He catch step, throw, catch step, looking throw, however you want to cook that. All right, one big step. It's like starting a lawnmower. Catch the ball, pop. All right, don't get lazy. Pull the lawnmower. That gets you your depth. That gets you from three and a half to five in one step. Cut the ball loose if you like what you got. If not, catch step, throw, catch step, looking throw. You're booting opposite. As you snap your head around and start to boot opposite, okay? This guy should be just getting done with his Hornets ball now. He is zero to four yards. He's going to run in the flat and cause the flat defender to have to make a decision. This guy's goal, 10, even on Laven, if not, get to 12 and break it off. Quarterback job here, get outside. He come, I throw. He drop, I go. Run the damn ball. If there's no one between you and the slot, Run the ball to the slot back and hand it to him. That's what I tell the quarterback. So if there's any question, the quarterback's got to come out of here and take it off. Guys coming toward the football when we get boot opposite, carry it across the field and for depth. Try to go deep across the field. If you're going away from the ball and they boot, you're basically out of the play. But I tell them to just turn around and try to get into, get into the game late, get across the field. All right, that, regardless of what we're doing on the front side, is the backside um, kind of route concepts as a very basic. We can switch those up. You can tag them with a single, uh, a single, a hand signal or, or a verbal case. But that's literally the, uh, the quick game. Like if we were running Hawaii, pitch, pitch, doesn't like it. Boot opposite, same thing. If we're running Ohio, out, fade, same thing. Doesn't like it, boot opposite. So there's no new teaching with all of this stuff. Your entire quick game is that. So again, coaching the quarterback. 